Uh, good morning. I am James Worthley, Slocog staff. Um, this is another public hearing uh, to take comments on our draft regional transportation plan. Now, RTPs are our long range blueprint for the region to meet our transportation needs for the future. They must be updated every four years or state and federal funding ceases. The RTP plans out to 2045, and every RTP contains four major elements. The policy element includes our goals, vision, action strategies, and performance measures. The, uh, that was the policy element. The action element covers all modes of transportation and our investments. The SES builds upon existing land uses and your general plans to plan for the new growth of 44,000 new people, 18,000 new jobs, and 18,000 new homes by 2045. And the financial element projects $3.1 billion to be available in state federal and local sources. However, there remains a gap of about $2.3 billion to deliver desirable improvements and un that will be remain unfunded for decades with that gap. Uh, there will be a second public hearing in Arroyo Grande at our next meeting in April. And you or public can send me comments directly to my email or to our address at SLOCOG. And there is a third round of public engagement going on right now. We've completed six or seven uh, engagement opportunities with, with various organizations, and we have 35 or more scheduled now uh, that will be going around the county hitting up these clubs, groups, and organizations. Charles Varney, Oceano. Um, a community-wide sidewalks and flood control water recharge project for Oceano checks every box on Slocog's policy goals. Infrastructure, decades of study and document, documentation of this need. Safety, no more studies need to confirm sidewalks and flood control could control improve community safety and well-being, especially around safe, safe routes to schools. Healthy communities. Literal tying together of community with such infrastructure encourages active transportation, social interaction, and public safety. Economic vitality. Millions in state and federal grant money for Oceano infrastructure creates hundreds of jobs, improves property values, encourages new investment and infill housing development, which is a major county priority. I already uh, iterated that Oceano is a disadvantaged community and there are designated uh, federal funds and state funds for DACs. Oceano is also a state economic opportunity zone, which provides uh, tax breaks for, in, for developers. In 2022, we had that project that uh, the grant proposal that I earlier mentioned and after more than 40 years of documentation of needed Oceano infrastructure um, we're at this in this transportation planning grant there is one project literally for inland Oceano over the next 20 years which is infill sidewalks for 17th and 19th Street. I can't tell you the amount of disappointment and frustration that that created in our community. Um, in the context of billions of federal and state dollars earmarked for projects exactly like the one needed in Oceano, we are looking at these two infill streets. Um, our county needs leadership which embraces this opportunity with a can-do, get-her-done attitude. You have the desire and support of the community well documented. Um, you uh, have policies directing you to provide fairness and equity to lower income and minority communities. You have community organizations willing to band together to do everything we can on our side. We have elected officials at the local, state, and federal levels who support Oceano. And I mean this question literally. What more can we possibly do to get support from the county and from Slocog on this? Thank you. Thank you. Eric Greening. Thank you, Eric Greening. And the previous commenter makes a strong case. Nerve Center, the first place to go in terms of getting things done in this document is the financial. Uh, it's a wonderful description of the various silos and what they're for. And I'm wondering whether it will be feasible to update that chapter with specific information about what's available from the Inflation Reduction Act. 
because I think that is going to be a part of the picture going forward and it's still a vague part now but uh, depending on the timing of the final I would hope that specific silo specific criteria specific information could be added to the very useful information that's already that in that chapter so that we have a complete picture and not a sort of scratch here and scratch there haphazard picture. The purpose of the regional transportation plan is to be the central go-to place for information about what can be done, how we're going to get there, and what's needed. That, that, that's correct. Um, if there is specific questions or comments that you'd like staff to work on right now, uh, we'd appreciate that because we will be collecting public comments through the April 5th board meeting. At that point afterward, we would be packaging up the response to those comments and for final consideration for the board in June. So with that in mind, we did have a lot of correspondence about Oceano sidewalks specifically. Yeah. And can you maybe just go over what the, what the process was for um, review of that wider project overall for incorporation or um, and then other considerations that will be looked at um, in the coming months? So to, to take a step backwards first and look region wide, there are shortfalls across every jurisdiction, every community, every area in the county. When you look at the amount of money, $3.1 billion available, and first you look at maintaining our streets and roads and maintaining our transit services as they are today, not trying to expand them, that eats up over 50% of the plan. That leaves less than a billion and a half for all of our improvements. A big chunk of that goes to major improvements that are highway related, like Highway 46 East and, and 101 projects. Now, it doesn't leave a lot for smaller and smaller and smaller. As a regional agency, we start off by looking at our major roadways, our highways, our freeways, our arterials. And as the money gets tighter and tighter, we start losing the amount of money and flexibility we have to address those smaller routes. When we get down to sidewalks on local roads, there's just not money left over. We have to make our, our RTP financially constrained. A general plan can plan it out and say we want sidewalks everywhere. The RTP has to identify what dollars are going to be spent on that project. So with our financial constraint as it is now, where we have no regional sales tax, like 25 other counties, we just don't have the opportunity to get down to that every sidewalk in every community in every neighborhood. I have a, a couple comments and it might lead to a staff question okay. about the approach um, to Oceano uh, in light of all the comments that we've received in written form and then some of the comments today. Um, but I, I want to give a little bit of context to the kind of the historical uh, equation in Oceano. And I'm going to take a little bit of time to do that because of the fact that uh, this has kind of risen to uh, the level that it has based on the uh, comments we've received in written form. Uh, and I want to talk about three categories. And I hope that for those organizing the community of Oce Oceano around active transportation projects and flood control, that this information can be communicated to those groups um, so we can all work toward the, the same common goal, which I think is improving uh, a federally disadvantaged community and making it a priority. Um, so I'm going to talk about three categories. The first is representation, the second is role, and the third is opportunity. So under the category of representation, um, we've got a newly constituted board of supervisors, and at a recent meeting, I took on uh, the community of Oceano uh, as a uh, basically in addition to District 4. So I'll be the point of contact for that community and I look forward to serving uh, the community of Oceano and, and advocating for the community of Oceano. Um, it's number two, role. There's, there's a question over what SLOCOG's role is, what we can do in terms of our staff and resources, and then the county's role and the public works department and um, you know what we need to do if we're going to try to work together is ensure that uh, Oceano has made a top priority at the Board of Supervisors level as well, so public works staff has direction to then 
coordinate around a strategic plan associated with improving Oceano. And at this point, that hasn't been done. So in terms of process, um, there's work to do uh, between the community and the representative uh, to ensure that we understand uh, the limits of what staff can and can't do right now based on current Board of Supervisors priorities. And then as a policy matter, the Board of Supervisors may decide to, to prioritize some level of staff resources. And then there's SLOCOG. I think hopefully uh, my colleagues here on the board will agree at some point in time that we need to prioritize Oceano. It is one of the, it is our biggest disadvantaged community. And um, now in the third category of opportunity, um, one of the public commenters spoke to the fact that uh, federally designated disadvantaged communities um, have, you know, a, a whole bunch of funding opportunities available, available to them, uh, whereas many other communities don't. And I think that one of those, as was mentioned by uh, Mr. Greening, is the Inflation Reduction Act. And I'm just going to cover a couple of those funding um, silos that have been created that I see as prime opportunities for specifically the disadvantaged community of Oceana. The first is a neighborhood access and equity grant program through the Federal Highway Administration that provides funding for meeting goals like improving walkability, safety, and affordable transportation access through, and one of the categories is building or improving complete streets, multi-use trails, regional greenways, or active transportation networks. Uh, and then the act Author appropriates 1.8 billion for those purposes in any community and an additional 1.2 billion is set aside for economically disadvantaged communities. So as I mentioned these funding categories, the kind of question that I'm asking is what kind of staff capacity are we gonna to need to pursue unique opportunities like these? And um, you know, we, ha we approved under item B3, I believe it was, the overall work program for staff for the next year. And included in that was um, the line item to administer the Safe Routes to School infrastructure program with cooperative agreements through the new Community Betterment Safe Routes for All grant program, and then also to administer SLOCOG Cycle 1 Community Betterment and Safe Routes for All grant program. So there's already some work that's being done based on this board's historic direction to create the Safe Routes for All program, which I think is great. Um, I think that leveraging those resources uh, as a possibility to pursue uh, other, you know, grant funding sources uh, would be something I'm interested in and hopefully the board uh, could support. So I'll circle back on that question. I want to uh, just conclude by mentioning two other funding silos within the Infrastructure Reduction Act, excuse me, Inflation Reduction Act. Mm -hmm. uh, the second is Environmental and Climate Justice Block Grants. A new block uh, grant program will make $2.8 billion available. One of the categories is Climate Resilience and ab ab Adaptation and facilitating engagement of disadvantaged communities in state and federal advisor groups, workshops, rulemaking, uh, and other processes. And then the third and final category, investing in coastal communities and climate resilience. A 2.6 billion National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration program will provide funding to a variety of recipients, including local governments. These funds are intended to enable coastal communities to prepare for extreme storms and other changing climate conditions and for projects that support natural resources that sustain coastal and marine resource dependent communities. Um, again, this is just one particular uh, grant opportunity uh, through the Inflation Reduction Act. We still have the Infrastructure and Investment uh, Act and then other state and federal resources. And so just wanted to highlight that for uh, purposes of our, our staff's attention, for the community's attention, and, and hope that we can work together uh, as not only the, the County of San Luis Obispo, but uh, SLOCOG uh, to prioritize the needs of Oceano, primarily around grant funding resources that are available, not necessarily RTP uh, funds, which are incredibly limited. We have projects that we need to support all throughout our region. And uh, you know, I think that making Oceano a priority from a grant funding standpoint would be a great thing. There, there's very little harm to adding projects to the unconstrained list. Um, it's 23, 24, 25 years away. Um, thank you, Supervisor Paulding, for highlighting all of those opportunities. And you know, not only do we have the Oceano, but we have San Miguel and all of that. And I know that Pete and I were talking a little bit earlier about the fact that um, grant writing, grant funding, all of that takes resources. And um, I'm 
just curious as to the appetite regionally for us to put our pennies together to try to find um, some additional staff through all these bright young minds out there um, that we could perhaps fund. Maybe it's something we do at the county level. I'm not sure. <laughs> I can't say I'm only one member of that board. But um, I do think it's one of the things that's going to be important for us to be able to analyze the, the IRA. The one, if I was looking at Santa Margarita, some of the areas that have the same problems of sidewalks, in my, um, I'm wondering if a pathway, I don't, I don't even know, I'm just throwing this out, but Oceano CSD, for example, going to LAFCO and expanding their um, jurisdiction to include whatever you would list sidewalks under, um, and then being able to maybe with the support of, of the county or SOCOG, be, I mean the human support, like <laughs> uh, some suggestions, but being able to have a vessel to accept grants on their own and know that the money coming in, not only would the money come to you, but you would almost have carte blanche on how exactly it was to be used rather than having other people telling you how your sidewalks are going to be or where they're going to be. It's just a thought. And somebody may, lots of my thoughts, I get the gate closed along the path, but it might be something to explore with the LAPCO folks. Chair, if I may just add an additional comment. I think that's a great idea and I'd love to explore that. Okay. Um, just in responding to uh, Board Member Strong's comment, the only reason I focus so heavily on uh, those particular resources as it re uh, the Inflation Reduction Act in Oceano is because that's the federal designation. And I know that our, our board and staff have worked really hard to create a local de de or a regional definition of a disadvantaged community that broadens you know, the scope of what we want to try to do to help the low income and other you know, disadvantaged uh, communities within our region and I totally support that. It's just from a, a standpoint of trying to capitalize on federally earmarked funds that could only be spent uh, in our region in certain ways, there are only a couple communities that meet that definition and would hope that we would pursue those funds.